America, I wrote this thing out. America, hmm. They have given away millions of acres of land to your friendly neighborhood white man. They have given millions of acres of land to poor whites who come from Europe, Poland, Italy, things of that nature. And they've done this and they have somewhat prospered when you look at it. America provided European peasants with an economic foundation. Not only did America give away land, but they provided financial funding. I'm going to show y'all that that's exactly what they did. Because a lot of times, you're, you're, you'll go to work or be at school, and whites will tell you, uh, work hard, pull yourself up by your bootstraps like my ancestors did, and you can be successful in society. Okay. The Columbia History of the World, okay, editors John A. Garrity, Peter Gay, by Harper and Row Publishers. Now, let's go inside the book. Notice where I have it underlined. It says the massive influx into America between 1830 and 1924 of some 35 million immigrants and large majority of them men and women in their 20s and 30s attracted by the greater opportunities and higher wages America offered. Let's go to the next page. Like all industrializing countries, America needed large amounts of capital for economic growth and for the social overhead of an urban technological society. Immigration played some part in meeting this need, willy-nilly. European countries had to pay the cost of nurturing immigrants who, when ready to become productive members of society, left for America. In the 19th century, the subsidy this practice bestowed on the American economy amounted to at least $1,000 for each new settler. So what happens to all the hard work, pull yourself up by your bootstraps like my, their ancestors didn't? That's a lie. They, you know how much $1,000 back in the 1800s was? You got, You've got you, to be kidding me. You got to look at the, you, got to, you have to look at the total disrespect and contempt for them to even say that to you. When you look at this here and then you look around you and you see these magnificent structures and all of these uh, nice homes and all of that stuff here, now you get the idea of where it came from. Because they did not, as, as they were saying, pull themselves up by their bootstraps. When they came and stole the land, they simply built on it what they stole. And that's the way you really have to look at it. So you cannot be here and being happy that you're in this condition. This is the more reason why we have to be a disciplined people and follow what our Lord and Savior told us to do so that we can get the hell out of here. Exactly. Now let's see the next video, uh, Abiel. I want to see. It flows too. Little, little house. Thought I might tell you a story. Oh, please, Pa. Little House on the Prairie, the deluxe remastered edition. Kansas, here we come. Experience all nine seasons of the groundbreaking series. You like home? Good. Because we got one now. Relive the memories. As long as you do your best, Laura, we'll always be proud of you. Of one courageous family. Yeah. Come on! Yeah. That sets out on an amazing adventure and discovers a thrilling new world. On your mark. Get set. Celebrate the characters you cherish. I'm Mary Ingalls, ma'am, and that's Laura. And the stories you'll never forget. Will you marry me? Of course I will. The timeless series you grew up with comes to life like never before. You 
You're a lucky man, Mr. Ingalls. This is the one thing in his life I'm absolutely sure of. See your favorite family beautifully restored. Well, Ingalls family, how's it look? With all nine seasons presented in their complete and uncut format for the first time since their original TV broadcast. I can't count all the things you've taught me. And exciting new bonus features. How's that sound? That sounds good to me. Including the 40th anniversary documentary, The Little House Phenomenon. I've decided something. Now, what's that happen? Home is the nicest word there is. Own all nine seasons of Little House on the Prairie, Deluxe Remastered Edition. Let me tell y'all something. Let me tell y'all something. You might, not, you might not realize it. The Ingalls family was nothing more than a family of colonial thieves. They were thieves. The whole family was thieves. They don't, y'all didn't get, you had to pick that up? They came, they got a thousand dollars. That's why I had to read this, I to set it up like that. A thousand dollars, they came over and now they settled with stolen land. And many people, black, white, Latin, everybody, I just love the Ingles. No. Deuteronomy 19, verse 14. Thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmark which they of old time have set in thine inheritance. So it was an inheritance not to be touched. Read it again. Thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmark, which they of old time have set in thine inheritance, which thou shalt inherit in the land that the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it. So they took away something that was given to us by the creator. Now read the, the one that the bishop said. Hey, I'm sorry, uh, Deacon. That's the reason why that white man, Ronald Sanders, called America the promised lands. Because they understood. I'm t Edomites, they do That's study. Right. That's why they call this Lord. land the promised land, because they're saying that God was promised this. That's the name of the book, Lost Tribes and Promised Lands. The, the, the um, person that gave those eyewitness accounts of the people he encountered in the land knew, according to what y Deacon Yawasop was saying, that this was promised to these people. That's why he wrote that stuff there. Exactly. Read that. Deuteronomy 27, 17. Cursed be he. That What's that word? Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark. So who said these white folks is blessed? God says they are cursed. And, so, and the black woman wants to marry her? The black man wants to marry her. The black man wants to marry the white woman? God says they are cursed. But you think that's all good in Jesus. No. Y'all are crazy. Did you finish that? Yes, sir. Can I give you another one, Bishop? Y'all yeah. going to love this. Give me Proverbs chapter 23, verse 10. Remember what you just read. Curse be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark. Now look at this beautiful prophecy here. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 10. Remove not the old landmark. And enter not into the fields of the fatherless. Because when they came to take us down, the first person to die was your father. That's right. They killed the men first. They massacred the men. Okay, there was a documentary on YouTube I was watching. I couldn't even finish it. It was a long documentary where they were speaking about um, Wounded Knee and a few other encounters. And they detailed it of... Little kids moved a little bit after they shot down the grown-ups and they were just walking through shooting little kids in the head. Little kids were crawling under their mother to try to hide. And they will push the mother over, see the trembling child, and shoot the child. Read it again. Remove not the old landmark and enter not into the fields of the fatherless. And this is why. Read on. For their redeemer is mighty. He shall plead their cause with thee. And that's what we're waiting on. That's what we're waiting on. That's why we tell y'all don't get stupid. And don't go rise up with no evil in your head saying y'all want to do things to people. The most high is our redeemer. And he's mighty. And if you move on these people without his say so, what you're saying is you don't believe in the scriptures. And you know what evidence of that, Deacon Asaph? When you read in the book of uh, Numbers, when the most high told the children of Israel to spy out the land, and the, Joshua and Caleb came back with a good report and said we could take the land. But the other 10 men said, no, we can't take the land. So then the Most High was mad. So then sometime later, the men said, okay, let's go take the land. Moses said, don't go now. God is not with us. And they said, we're going to go anyway. And got put to death. Because you got to wait on the Most High's uh, commands. You got somebody, thought? Yes. Give me um, Sirach 34 and verse 21. About all the mention earlier about how those, they're not, they're colonial thieves. They're also colonial murderers. Right. 
The Lord going to show you that now. Sirach, chapter 34 and verse 10. Now in the book um, by Bartolome de la Casas, he quotes this scripture because he witnessed them killing, the, killing our brothers and sisters on the side of the world and taking the land. The Spaniards. Read this. He that hath no experience. No, 34 verse 21. 34 verse 21. The bread of the needy is their life. He that defraudeth him thereof is a man of blood. Read again. The bread of the needy is their life. The bread of the needy is their life, meaning our food, this land was our life. Go ahead. He that defraudeth him thereof. He that takes it from him, go ahead. Is a man of blood. Read the next part. I'm going to explain it again. He that taketh away his neighbor's living slayeth him. That's what they did on this side of the world. He that taketh away his neighbor's living slayeth him. Go ahead. And he that defraudeth the laborer of his hire that's is. That's what Nat Turner was, was um, responding to. They had us working for them for free. Laboring in the land that was stolen and had us working, working it for them for free. Read it again. And he that defraudeth the laborer of his hire is a blood shedder. That's what he saw. He's a blood shedder. And therefore, if you live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. Like Revelation 13, 10 says. Exactly. Get Micah chapter 2. We got to realize the Bible is the greatest history and prophetic book on the planet Earth. It, it, there's no other equal to this book. That's why we don't play games with the Bible. We're going to tell it to you straight. Whether you, your feelings get hurt, sometimes your feelings need to get hurt. You got it for me, Captain? Michael chapter 2. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. And work evil on their beds while they're sleeping. Go ahead. When the morning is light. When they get up in the morning. They practice they it. They practice it. They practice the evil they devised on their bed the night before. Go ahead. Because it is in the power of their hand. They had the guns. They had the, what's that special gun they had? The Gatling gun. They created all kinds of new weapons. Go ahead. And they covet fields. They what fields? Covet fields. Covet means to desire wrongfully. Covet that which is not yours. Go ahead. And take them by violence. How did they take the fields of America? By violence. That's who said this? God. This is what God is prophesying to us. Come on. And houses and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. So this is an oppressive man. He oppressed us and he oppresses our house. And Bishop, you know what's heavy about that? All of you can remember. Well, I don't know what they teach now, but I know when I was growing up in elementary school, they reinforced in our heads that the natives were so stupid, they gave the land up for beads and trinkets. Right, right. Okay? Exactly. 20, 20, they keep showing the picture of the, the simple natives coming up with their hands out, and the white man like, these, these hopeless little children, let's right. just take their beads, and, and that's what they want to reinforce your head. But right. the Bible says it was through bloodshed and violence. That's right. No negotiations. Broke every single treaty. Many of these Edomite leaders, they sat down in an attempt to appear civil. Like they'd have the American Indians come up, sit down. But then they would uh, sit down and create, um, present deeds of sale in incomprehensible illegal documents. That couldn't be understood. Right, could not be understood. Only they could understand it. Exactly. That's what they do. To this day, many of the descendants of these so-called pioneers or settlers received federal subsidies. Many of them were used to set up militia groups. Remember, I remember that word. They were used to set up militia groups to ward off Native American Indians and slave revolts. Now, you're going to ask, what does that got to do with us today? It has everything to do with us today. Now, ah, before I get to it, cause I, I'm going to hit y'all with something. Let me get it. Let me look. So we discussed how they look us in the face and say, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, right? We discussed that, brothers? Yes, sir. Okay. They will never admit that they have murdered, they have stolen. They don't admit that at all. Neither their descendants. Thomas Jefferson with his lion's lying self. That, uh, uh, what's the thing Thomas Jefferson wrote? The Declaration of Independence. Lie. It's a lie. The Declar you hear what I said? The Declaration of Independence is a lie. American Indians realized that back then, and so did the slaves. So, you know, this is all a lie. It said, we, I can't quote, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all, that all men are created, created equal. equal. To, and they are endowed with certain un in inalienable, inalienable rights. rights. Well, I think, let me see if I wrote it down. Uh, uh, inalienable rights that among these are life, 
liberty, liberty and, the and pursuit the pursuit of happiness. of happiness. That's it. That's all a lie. It had nothing to do with black people, Native Indians, Latinos. Had nothing to do with us. Now, right, nothing with the twelve tribes. Now, let me show you the next video. Give me Young Turks. I want the Young Turks video because they say we're all equal, right? When we watch this video, because some of y'all are here, some of you sisters might be thinking, we are all equal, I don't know. I'm going to show you a video right now that just happened in the news. And it's going to prove out of the white man's mouth. You might not believe God, but when the white man speaketh, thou again. shalt believeth. <laughs> And hold it now. I'm glad you said it, Dad, because I was thinking on those terms. He, ha he when he when he comes before you, he comes as I call it his whiteness. He believes he believes in that whiteness. He said, "You don't understand. I got whiteness rolling with me." Y'all step back. Let me speak. He said, "Just let me talk to them. I don't have to bring no paperwork. No, Nina. Just let me speak. Because all I have to do is talk, and they're gonna just automatically follow." What do you mean? Why? Because I'm white. Don't you see? Let me, you know, so that kind of that's that's he carries that confidence with him, and it's and it's literally reinforced when we deal with him. Exactly, it's embedded in our heads. Uh, you got the video? Okay, let's watch. It. How long is it? Okay, I, we're gonna watch the whole thing, but I want you. This is something that occurred in the news a few months ago. Okay, where the, a, a militia group took over a federal reserve park. They took over a park with guns. Watch. Last night, the feds finally moved in on the militia members illegally occupying the Malhor uh, Wildlife Refuge, capturing some of the leadership on the outskirts of the area and engaging in a shootout with some of the other militia members, resulting in one death. Here is the, the overview. Amon Bundy, uh, the sort of, I guess, self-proclaimed leader of the organization, and four others, including his brother Ryan Bundy, were arrested after a traffic stop, which resulted in a gunfight. Militia member Robert Lavoie Finnicum was killed in the gunfire, and Ryan Bundy was shot in the arm, although he does not appear to be seriously injured. Two other militia leaders were arrested separately, and a third, John Eric Ritzheimer, turned himself in to authorities in Arizona. He got there really fast. No, I'm joking. He didn't there before. Um, so we do have uh, mug shots of uh, some, not all of the people who were arrested just last night, but you're seeing uh, a good number there, including the, the Bundy brothers in the top left. Yes. First of all, I'll just jump in right there with mm -hmm. the last graphic that John had there. One of the militia leaders uh, arrested in Arizona. What the hell is he doing in Arizona? Yeah. Like, this is amazing to me. Well, they've been crazy open borders basically this entire time. They're going into town. No, but They're look, buying supplies. They went, they went and bought, bought groceries. So that, the thing that amazed me is I kept reading and reading, trying to figure out how are these guys contained earlier before the shootout. Now we have more details because yeah. of the... It's, it's, I don't even know if it's fair to call it a shootout. One guy got killed because he charged the cops, okay, because of the rest. And then when you read into the details, you find out, no, they're free to come and go. Dude mm -hmm. goes to Arizona. N nobody arrests them. Yeah. They go get groceries. Nobody arrests them. Well, they they go talk to the – they say they went and talked to the federal authorities, the FBI, unarmed. They'd have conversations with them. Yeah. Well, Early FBI – no, no. If you're having a conversation with a dude who took over federal property with a weapon, yeah. here's the conversation – here's how that conversation goes. You're under arrest. That's how that conversation goes. Mm -hmm. This story is the definition of white privilege. And if you don't see that you've got white privilege – well, you have it and don't realize it, yeah. <laughs> which is the whole point. Now, eventually, this Finnegan guy got shot. Let John give you all the details, yeah. and then I want to come back with some of the privileges that they had that no one else in the country would be afforded. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I think it's it's easy to criticize, but I, I think that they were doing a classic starve out where you just really hope that they don't buy enough groceries for all <laughs> of them to eat. That's what the government does. They lock them down. They starve them out. They don't eat with them. Uh, necessarily, but yeah, we do have the details on Lavoie, which we'll get to in just a second. Um, but right off the bat, we have a co commentary by uh, Head Bundy, uh, Cliven Bundy, uh, who, political leader apparently now, who says this is a total disaster to be happening in America, where we have federal pe people killing innocent people. He defines innocent differently than I do. I think uh, we believe that these federal people shouldn't even be there in that state, and be in that county, and have anything to do with this issue. Well, I feel that way about a different group than the federal people. Uh, I have some sons and other people there trying to protect our rights and liberties and freedoms, and now we've got one killed, and all I can say is he's sacrificed for a good purpose, agree to disagree, 
on that. Now, uh, in terms of the, the reaction from the militia members, so the militia members find out that Lavoie has been shot, and there's immediately both an uproar in the militia circles right there in Oregon and around the country, but then we also have uh, sort of different ideas of exactly what happened to him, and it took a little while for the, the real story to come out. So first, here is video released by militia men in Oregon when they find out that one of their own has been killed in a shootout with the police. Media has been ordered to leave. That means they're coming to kill us, and they don't want them to see that. They're going to murder all of us, and the medias are cowards. Stay and show the truth. Show the truth. Media has been waiting for a bloodbath this whole time we've been here. Now there's going to be one, and they're running. They're told to run because the feds don't want to know who's murdering us. American people better wake up, get here, and fight for your country. Right now, it is on. What you gonna do, what you gonna do when the, when the militia comes after you, FBI? All you military that's been fighting for your country overseas, you can fight for your country right here in America. Get here, get some. This is history in the making. There are no laws in this United States now. This is a free-for-all Armageddon. Any le Leo or military or law enforcement or feds that stand up and fuck their oath, don't abide by their oath, are the enemy. If they stop you from getting here, kill them! Okay, so just right off the bat, all of you who keep tweeting us and have been since the beginning that they haven't threatened anyone, even though they have almost every day in the interim, he just said to kill them if he they said, try to stop you. If any authorities try to stop you, kill them. Kill them. So Could just you be clear. imagine? Be Dro clear. No, I'm done. Drop it. Drop it. Could you imagine? If armed black people looked at a camera and said, if the cops stop you at all, kill them. We're going we're to have a conversation with these guys. They're free to come and go for three weeks. These guys, there was no perimeter. The FBI says, oh, don't worry, we just set up a perimeter. Goddamn right I'm worried. Why didn't you set up a perimeter the first time that they captured a federal building armed, talking about how they're going to murder people who come and try to take it from them? That is theft of federal property. By the way, it is... Uh, a sentence punishable for up to 10 years if you take any federal property above $1,000 without permission. That is exactly what happened here. They took fairly large federal property. And here these guys on camera say, we're going to murder the cops, right? If they come to get us, you stole shit, you criminal, you thug. You went and stole it with weapons. And now you see if you come to take it back, oh, I'm going to kill you. Right? And that more people should come and be traitors to America while pretending to be patriots. Look at the white privilege here. And it's, by the way, not just white, it's right wing privilege. Because if white left wingers yeah. had taken over, environmental groups had taken over and said, oh, we're going to do this and we're going to do that, whatever it was, it doesn't matter if it's a Latino black group or it's just white, you know, Greenpeace or animal rights guys, nobody gets to come and go and threaten cops and talking about killing them. Look at here's what happened. So first of all, as John read to you, he said, uh, Clive and Bundy, about the guy who got killed, uh, he sacrificed for a good purpose. Yeah, th thank you for being exactly like the Muslim radicals. Oh, he was a good martyr, sacrificed for a good purpose, right? Uh, so now, uh, he, the guy who was killed, Finnegan, uh, according to uh, two guys in the car, got out of the car, would not listen to the cops, rushed at the cops, and the cops had to shoot him, okay? There's an 18-year-old who's melodramatic, who got to go into the camp, who now says, oh, no, no, he, he had his arms up and was surrendering. Her compatriots, who were in the car with her, the other militia members, are like, that's not true. He charged at the cops, okay? So now, uh, that Finnicum guy says, we used, before he obviously got shot, a couple of days ago, he said, we used to walk up to the feds and talk to the agents in a friendly manner, unarmed and stuff. After you took over the federal building, armed, yeah. can you imagine Black Panthers take over a building? Or Muslims take over a building? And they just walk up to the FBI and have a friendly conversation with them, and, and they don't get arrested. This is white privilege. You can steal stuff. You can steal federal stuff. And they don't even arrest you for three weeks. And then he says, now, they're no longer willing to engage in friendly dialogue. <laughs> 
I mean, you don't even know your privilege. The tenor has <laughs> changed. You're, you're, the guy says, why are you ramping it up now? Why the rattling of the sabers? <laughs> you ramped it up when you took the building with arms. He says, and we're saying, why be so unfriendly? Why? Why are you so threatening? Why be so unfriendly? Because you were threatening when you grabbed your assault weapons and took over the federal building and said, we will murder anyone who comes inside that is uh, federal authorities or, or local authorities. That is the threatening part. But if you're white and right wing, yeah. you own, because the idea is I own the place. Yeah. Even if it's not mine, I'll just steal it and now I own it. Because that's the history of this country. And then we, you get mad because they aren't following the law. That's what that fat bastard. No, you video. aren't following the law. I've got more. Uh, so why is that 18-year-old in the car, the one making up the stories? According to other militia members, yeah. she's making up stories. Victoria Sharp. I yeah. Think. Last week, her mother and six siblings came to sing for the militants. What the fuck are we doing? The FBI, local authorities, let people go in and out of the house. They let kids walk into the house yeah. to sing for them. Could you imagine Muslim radicals take over a federal building with weapons? Bring the kids. Like, oh, no, no, but to be fair, kids came in to sing for them, and we let them. Yeah. <laughs> Are you fucking, no, you don't believe that. Even if you're the dumbest right-winger in the country, you don't believe that. You know that we would surround the building, we wouldn't let anybody in, we wouldn't let anybody out. But if you're white and right wing, you get to do whatever the fuck you want. I mean, you've been stealing shit this whole history of the country, so you feel like, well, I'm entitled to steal other people's stuff, and I'm entitled to get away with it. I'm entitled to have my family join me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Sharp, the 18 year old, not arrested. You're in a shootout with cops. Okay, put, she's 18 years old. You're telling me, you know. The, the black girls at that pool in Texas, yeah. you remember? We got thrown they, around. Right. They were teenagers. They were under 18. They're at a pool party. They get thrown around like this. You're a fucking black girl, so we throw you around like this. You're a white girl in a shootout with cops, and you walk away. You walk away. White privilege. You don't get it because this is, you feel like I own this country. I can do whatever the fuck I want. I can tell cops I'm going to murder them. I can have one of my buddies get in a shootout with the cops, and I walk the fuck away. You know how quickly she would have been put down, let alone arrested, if she was black, Latino, Muslim, or any other minority. Two, okay, put her aside. Two of Eamon Bundy's bodyguards who were in the car were uh, seized by the authorities, as they seized everybody, questioned. And then they let him go. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> oh, I've got a Muslim radical leader here who yeah. took a federal building with weapons and his bodyguards with weapons in a shootout with cops. <laughs> they go, oh, well, you were just bodyguards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were just Muslim jihadi bodyguards. You're free to go, right? <laughs> they were free to go. They're out right now. <laughs> this is the definition of white privilege. And by the way, again, right wing. No way if it's a Greenpeace people or other people that they let them go. If it's a Berkeley no student, way. they get pepper sprayed from an inch away. We understand that. Oh, I mean, you're, still, you're, you're a protester on a college campus and you're left wing. You're protesting war. They're going to put you down. They're going to pepper spray you. They're going to mace you. They might shoot you. But they're not going to let you walk away if you're armed. Yeah. You know what, by the way, everyone involved in those cars, if they're not white right wingers, you know what happens to them? Life sentence. You know why? I've covered this a million times on the show, and look it up. It's called felony murder. They're in the commission of a criminal act, a felony. Someone gets shot and dies, and yes, it can be a person involved in committing the felony. This is the most classic case, an armed bank robbery. A guy goes in, his buddy gets shot by the cops, he gets a life sentence because someone died in the commission of that criminal act. Someone died, Finnicum died. All the people in the cars, felony murder, life sentence. But that's only if they're black, Latino, or any other minority. But if you're white and you're a right winger, yeah. they let you walk out of the fucking building. This is insane, man. There's two different laws in the country, and we walk around and pretend it isn't. Why am I so angry today? Because in my infinite foolishness and naivete, I didn't realize it was this bad. After all of this, I thought, no, not, they must have a perimeter around the place. Yeah. They must be, uh, 
arrest the bodyguards. Of course you arrest the bodyguards and put them in jail. <laughs> no, I was wrong. I was wrong. If you're white and right wing in this country, you could do almost anything and get away with it. You know, Clive and Bundy, the dad who's talking about martyrs now, he still owes the government a million dollars. He's like, I'm not paying it. And if you come to collect it, like we did last time, we'll shoot you in the head. Can you imagine a black man owes ten dollars rather than a million dollars to the federal authorities or state authorities? And he says, No, 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 you can't collect the ten dollars I owe you because I'll shoot you in the head if you do. And you have any idea how quickly he'd be put down? They would wait a month or so. Tamir Rice was Think a twelve-year-old. He was a twelve-year-old for Christ's sake. He had a toy gun. These guys have real guns. Tamir Rice didn't say I'll kill you. They never gave him a chance to speak. He was shot dead in two seconds. These guys have been saying for three weeks, he gets two seconds. They get three weeks of saying, we're going to murder you, we're going to murder you, we're going to murder you, and they still get away with it. So finally, after three weeks, they bothered to arrest them. Fucking white privilege. That's what this is. See, if I had said that happened, they wouldn't believe me. So I had to let the white man tell y'all exactly what happened in the news. So, and me at home, me and my wife, we'd be home, home saying, well, what happened with that militia group? Every night, yep. did something happen? Did something? No. Nope. One week go by, two weeks, I'm like, what the hell's going on? Oh, now they ain't even talk about it. Then, boop, it comes up. What are you going to say, y'all, son? Nah, that was it. All he has to do is just come and say, like I said before, all he has to do is just come into the room. He said, listen, I got my whiteness with me. It's going to work. <laughs> and this, what we just saw, was not... 20 years ago. This was now. This was now in the news. Shalom, this I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, Please make sure you subscribe to this join IUIC channel to get your latest updates from all our YouTube channels. Shalom.